and welcome to the 19th, 19 already, welcome to the 19th episode of the Fiber of My Being podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet and spinning and whatever else I feel like doing that day. My name is Megan, and I am the host of this podcast, and you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Fiber of My Being, and please check out our Fiber of My Being Ravelry group. Um, a podcast group on Ravelry. That's what it is. I'm a little bit hectic today because I came from the shelter and I have to go back to the shelter. And, uh, there were lots of puppies this week. It's been a hectic week. Um, but my name's Megan and I live here in central Pennsylvania with my husband, Paul, and our three cats. And I can hear them tearing around right now. Um, yeah, and I work in an animal shelter, so when I'm not knitting and things, I'm over there. Um, yeah. And then it's also been a hectic week because this past Saturday, it's Monday right now, the 20th, the first day of spring, free Rita's day! We just got our free Rita's. Um, that went on a whole tangent. This Saturday, this past Saturday, the 18th of March, was For the Love of Fiber, which is a fiber festival in the area here, um, put on by the guilds, knitters and spinners and weavers and embroiderers. And so I went there, and it was awesome. And I may have bought a lot of things. But... I will get to that later, but it was just amazing. The market was awesome, and they had demonstrations and uh, setups of all sorts of like different examples of knitting and spinning and things like that. And my cats are being crazy over there. Um, but I also took a class about fiber prep um, that was taught by one of the ladies I've met in the Spinners Guild. And I found it so informative, and I feel like I'll be able to do a lot more with my fiber before I spin it, and I'll be able to spin it a lot better because I've taken that class. And I also talked to that lady after the class about getting some pointers about how to buy a fleece, because I would really love to buy a fleece soon. And I think the... Uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool is coming up at the beginning of May, so yeah, that would be a great place to buy a fleece, so that might be in my future. But because of all this hecticness that's been going on, I haven't gotten a whole bunch of stuff done. I didn't really do any spinning this week, and I've only done a little bit of knitting, but I will show you what I have nonetheless. Um, and I will start with finished objects. And this is a mostly finished object, but as you may see very soon, I still need to weave in the ends and block them. But I finally finished Paul's socks. There's two of them, I promise. Two socks. Finally finished. What, what, what? So... This is the Vanilla Sock with Gusset and Choice of Heel. The pattern is by Joe Tor on Ravelry. And I knit this out of Mountain Colors Barefoot Base, which is their standard merino nylon blend, um, in the Pinecone colorway, which is just this lovely shades of brown with lots of Lots of other colors showing up in the tonals. I always say this on film. It looks like there's oranges and purples and even some greens now and then. But to me, it mostly just looks brown. But Paul likes them that way. These are for Paul, and I've procrastinated terribly on finishing them. But I finally got finished with knitting the 2x2 two two twisted cuff up here. These were my first toe-up socks. So I finally got finished, and he's tried them on, and they fit him wonderfully. A lot better than they fit these sock blockers that were made for 
my size feet. So that's good. I mean, they're a lot longer than the sock blocker. Um, but yeah, I finally, finally, finally finished these. Um, and I just noticed that I didn't talk about what I'm wearing either, so I'll talk about that really quick. This is the Quilted Lattice Ascot, a pattern by Pam Powers from the book Dress to Impress Knitted Scarves, which is my, like, most used knitting book, probably. So I just love this pattern here, and I like to use it in lots of things. I think that all knitting should have a little bit of that pattern because it's just beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing. And these are the socks that I finished. Sock party, sock party. So that is actually my only finished object per se. But I do have a half finished object and a mostly finished object. So I'll go to the half finished object first. Half object. And that half object is my mitten, my Latvian mitten, which as you may notice, actually has a thumbnail. And it doesn't look too shabby if I do say so myself. And I really like how the thumb kind of just disappears into the palm when you hold it the proper way. You can't really see the thumb, but it's there. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still fighting whatever is going around. Um, but the other exciting thing is that there are no ends to be woven in. I wove them all in already. That's, that's pretty impressive for me. High five me. I'm in a really weird mood today. And yeah, I'm just going to be a weirdo this whole podcast. I'm sorry. But I have finished a mitten. <coughs> this is the Latvian mitten pattern by Lisbeth Upatis. Again, pronunciation, not my strong suit. Um, from the book Knitting Hats and Mittens from Around the World. So I have finished the first mitten, and it fits pretty well. I wish the cuff were a little bit further down, but it's not a huge deal. And I just love how it looks. And this was knit in Knit Picks Palette in um, the purple is Majestic, the red is Serrano, the yellow is Canary, and the green is Grass. And I just love these colors together. This mitten. What? It's just... It's just... No words. Yay. <coughs> and... I managed to also cast on this very tangly mess, which is actually the beginning of the second mitten. I probably can't really show you all that well, but believe me, it is the beginning. There's that lovely twisted, twisted edge. So I have started it, and I just started the color work. So it really is there. It really is. Um, but then I didn't work too much on this this week because of working on other things. So, but I have a half object, and I started other half of the object. So that's good. And then my mostly finished object is this. This is the Targi wool that I got from the Twist um, Knitting and Spinning Shop in Doylestown area. And I decided I wanted to dye this up to make a fractal spinning project because I've never spun fractally before. Um, so I used Wilton's, uh, gel food coloring to dye this, and I got this lovely vibrant orange and a pretty pink, and then I love this green too. The only part about this that I'm not happy about is that this was supposed to be like a nice vibrant blue, 
and it's just kind of washed out. So I, um, I really want that blue because I think the colors all together will look kind of like tropical when spun fractally. So I think I'm going to just, I have to break up the, the braid to spin a fractal yarn anyway. So I think when I break it up, I'm just going to take this, this quarter that was supposed to be blue and just re-dye it, get it more vibrant blue. So um, that's why it's mostly done, because I have dyed it. I'm just not happy with this one quarter of the wool, because it's not very blue. Not at all. But it's so squishy, and now so colorful, and I'm okay with that. So, so yeah, that's my mostly finished object. Mostly. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be right back to talk about works in progress. So, for my works in progress, I'm still uh, chugging along with uh, keeping up with the Inside Number 23 Harry Potter cow. So, I thought... I needed something that I could do in a month um, to, to make an entry into that cow. And I'm also having a reunion of some college friends this year in which we're going to do lots of fun Harry Potter stuff. So I figured for that party, I'm going to need a sorting hat. So um, still looks a little funny, <laughs> kind of looks like a platypus or something. But, um, the, the edge here is going to get sewn together to be the mouth. Um, but it's just kind of like, I want it to be able to fit on our heads. And it's just still a little too small. So, um, I'm going to just do another round or two of the pattern of the increases before I start the brim, but this pattern is pretty great. It's um by Allison Hoffman, just called a sorting hat, and um, it crocheted up super quickly. I did this in an hour because it is crocheted using two strands of worsted weight yarn and a massive size N hook which is nine millimeters. So it's a pretty big hook, pretty big yarn. And so this was one hour while I was watching just a Netflix show. And uh, yeah, so the only reason it's not done is because I didn't want to have to do the math for changing the rounds and making a few more rounds before um, I do the brim. I didn't want to have to do that math while I was watching TV because TV and math for me just don't mix. Uh, but I think I'll be able to finish this up this week, maybe even today. We'll see. But nice magical knit. <coughs> and then let's see here. My next work in progress It's a bit, I, I think I might have to frog it, but I'm going to show you anyway because I'm proud of the progress that I did. This is my British driving cap. Um, the pattern is by Anne Carol Gilmore from the book Knitting Hats and Mittens from Around the World, the same one that the Latvian mittens are from. And I've been working on the top of the hat. And now this is like larger than my head. All together larger than my head and my husband does have a bigger head than I do but not this big because this is the third repeat of this central motif and I still have to do the back shaping and then this is just the top of the hat and so I think it's just gonna be really massive and also I made quite a few mistakes I haven't been doing a selvage edge like I should have which is going to make picking up stitches awful. And then, I don't know if you can see this, but here, I accidentally deviated from the double moss 
double moss stitch pattern and um, went into a few rows of seed stitch. So you can see a slight irregularity right here. And it's not that noticeable, but it would bug me forever and ever. So I should probably frog this and start again. But I might just take a little bit of a break before I start again, because I've put a lot of work into this and it's going to be a little disappointing to see it frogged. But hopefully one day this will still be a hat for Paul. Um, next up, this is actually in the middle of a row and I didn't get that much progress on it, but this is my Multnomah shawl by Kate Ray on Ravelry. And I am knitting it in Cascade Heritage Wave, um, which has this lovely long color gradient. And I've just been working some more, just uh, knitting away at this feather and fan pattern. I think I was maybe about here or so before, so I've knit a few repeats. Um, but really not a whole lot of progress on this. I just, mostly I took this to the festival and knit on it while I was there. But let's face it, there was so much yarn to buy and fiber and so many fun things to do that I really didn't do much knitting. So, yeah. Um, also, the other reason I haven't done a whole lot on that shawl is because I picked up a couple of languishing whips. And I'm really making a lot of progress on them. So, let's talk about those, shall we? First off is my... Rodicole scarf, which is a pattern by Nancy Marchant, the Queen of Brioche, and it's an ascot style scarf, so it's going to be a little bit like the one I'm already wearing. Um, it's got a keyhole that um, the other side of the scarf will feed through, right about there. And so I'm nearly to the point where I can do the other end of the scarf with the other little keyhole and everything. I have maybe three inches to go. Um, so I've really made some progress on this because before I was only maybe about here. Um, so I've made a lot of progress and I'm hoping to keep it up uh, in the next few days because if I can just get to this section I think the rest of it will be a breeze. But it's just kind of this log of needing to knit this four row repeat for such a long length that has been taking me so long. And this is knit in um, Loops and Threads Wool Like, which is just acrylic. Um, and it's just this lovely brioche. There's the other side with the white dominant. And I just really want to be able to wear this. So. Hopefully I finish it this week. And then, my last whip. I'm sure I'm not going to finish it this week, but hopefully I'll be able to get more work done on it. Because it is my long languishing Honeycomb Erin pullover. It's a pattern, a free pattern by Patents. And I just love it. The yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in their Brass Heather color. Just look at that color. Just, it's just the best color. So, um, just lovely and golden. So, I had let this languish for quite some time. And when I picked it up, I was just getting ready to do this cable cross in the pattern. So I've done a whole another two two diamond repeats. Um, I double checked my gauge and to make sure I was knitting the right size because I think that's why I put it down initially. I thought it was going to be too small but it's turning out to be the right size. Um, but so I knit a lot on this this week until I realized that my needles were starting to kind of come apart and it was really unwieldy. There wasn't quite enough um, cable cable length 
to make it easy to knit this sweater. So I decided to splurge and buy some nicer needles for it. So I got my first ever pairs of Chowgu needles. Um, so I just got the size needed for knit knitting the, um, the main body of the sweater. I didn't get the, the size for the ribbing because that's a short enough length of ribbing that I can just knit it on the other needles because they're not falling apart yet, but these are. Um, so I just got these in the mail today. The snow delayed my Amazon Prime shipment for like a week. Um, so yeah, I just got them today. And while I'm thinking about it, I also got another pair of Chowkus. So the ones I needed for this sweater were four millimeter needles, size US six. Um, but I also got a US size one, which is 2.25 millimeter needles, because I think that having this nice longer cable, it's a 40, 40 inch cable, and uh, the biggest cables I have are 32 inches. Um, and it's also a much nicer, much nicer cord. It's more flexible. I think it will make magic looping two at a time socks a whole lot easier. So I picked the size that I typically knit socks with and maybe later I will get other sizes. But for now, this will work for my next few pairs of socks. So I'm really excited about these. Chow goo. There's an awful glare, I know, but believe me, they're chow goo, and they're beautiful, and I'm really happy. So, believe me, I'm going to be knitting this tonight. I have to go to the shelter right after I film this, which is the only reason why I'm not going to be knitting this right then. Um, but yeah, so that's the back piece of that sweater, and that's the first piece that I've actually knit on it, so... Um, I still have the whole sweater to do. Don't expect that to be done anytime soon, but I really, really like it a lot. I actually, um, I forgot to bring my shawl that, um, kind of inspired me in some of the knitting projects I've picked up lately, but you know what? I can, I need to take a break, so I will go grab it quick. Be right back. Okay, so I've got my shawl. This is the Tailwind Shawl by um, Clara Falk, I believe. Um, I've talked about it in previous podcasts, so you can go check those out to double check that this is by Clara Falk, but it's definitely the Tailwind Shawl. And I knit this out of Knit Picks Palette, um, which is the same yarn that I'm knitting those Latvian mittens out of. It's just 100% wool, and it's not merino, it's just wool, and so it's a little bit on the scratchy side, but it doesn't bother me. It's just nice and wooly and beautiful, and I was wearing it the other day, and I just found myself, like, sniffing it over and over again because it just smells nice and wooly, too, and a little bit like lavender because of the Euglan wool wash that I use, but um, it's just so wooly and so comfortable, and it just kind of sticks to itself so well that it made me just really want to work with more wooly wools. I feel like I'm turning into um, Ellie of Skandir Knits like that because she talks a lot about pure wooly wools. And I'm really coming to appreciate them more. Um, when I got when I got this Felici in the mail, it almost felt too soft for me. So, um, but I, don't worry, I will still knit this and appreciate it and love it. But um, yeah, I'm really liking the woolly wools, and that's what made me start looking for projects that I had with woolly wool. And that's what brought me to this, because this is also kind of just a little scratchy, a little bit wooly. Um, just not, it's not merino soft. And I'm okay with that. 
Um, and the fact that I'm knitting those Latvian mittens in the wooly wool, it I'm really appreciating how kind of sticky it is. Like, if I drop a stitch, it doesn't just unravel like crazy. It just stays there, and I can pick it back up, and it's wonderful. So, um, wearing this shawl and smelling it and feeling it, that inspired me to pick my sweater back up again. So, I guess it's a success. Um, so anyway, now that I'm talking about how much I love woolly wools, how about I talk about what woolly wools I happened to get because I went to For the Love of Fiber and I saved up my birthday money and went on a fiber shopping spree. And I came away with this. Um, this whole bag is full of things. And um, it's not all from Shirsty Cat, but I went to Shirsty Cat's stand first and she was handing out these lovely canvas bags with her purchases. And so I found it very convenient then to just use this bag to fill up with um, all of my purchases from other shops too. So this is all full of stuff and I'm going to start deconstructing it and a lot of things are in bags so there's going to be lots of crinkling. But I'll do what I can. First off, there was um, a fiber mill. I'm trying to see, okay, yeah, I have one of their cart. I have their labels here. Um, there's a fiber mill near Harrisburg, I think, um, that's called Gertie Run Woolen Mill. Um, and they were there, of course, with some yarns and things that they mill, some beautiful yarns. Um, but also with lots of wool, you know, fiber. So I bought some by the ounce fiber which I'll show first. And I got two ounces, two lovely braids of um, this beautiful gray wool that if I remember correctly, this is alpaca and tease water, tease water um, wool from tease water sheep. And then um, silk. So it's just lovely and soft and I'm really excited to spin it and I think it'll make a really good woolen spun yarn for me to practice woolen spinning. Uh, so really happy with that. I also got from them a bag. I got wool in my mouth. Um, I got a bag of dyed wool locks. It doesn't say what kind of wool locks exactly but yeah, um, and they're really, really pretty locks. And I'm thinking of maybe trying to tail spin with these, because um, I did lock spinning, like spinning a whole yarn out of locks, and that was fun, but I want to try something new too. So we'll see what I do with these. And then my very first bag, but certainly not my last, of Angelina. This is like a whole ounce of beautiful coppery Angelina. They have lots of colors, but I was just really drawn to this copper because it's a it's not a common color to see in sparkles, and I really like it. So that was my purchasing from Gertie Run Woolen Mill. Let's see, I need a list to make sure that I don't forget anything. Next up, I need to reach into the bottom of the bag. Next up was a purchase from Aisling Yarns, I believe is how you would pronounce it. Um, there's their beautiful tag, and of course there's the yarn. Um, this is a lace weight yarn, which I was super excited about. I love when people sell lace weights. And it's 100% superwash merino. Um, so it's, it's a very high twist yarn, which makes it a lot better for um, knitting nice, sturdy lace weight things than some of, uh, 
They also had a base with like cashmere and silk in it. This is a lot sturdier than that. Um, and cheaper too, which is always nice, but um, yeah, it just feels nice. And I just really liked this range of purples and pinks. The color is called Days of Wine and Roses. And yeah, so it's just this lovely shades of purples and pinks, lovely lace weight. That tag is adorable. And so that's what I picked up from Aisling Yarns. Next up is my first, um, my very first project bag that I've bought that I didn't make. And um, I was looking at this stand. It, the stand was called Sunshine Lily Crafts. And I was looking around. There were some cute ones, you know, birds and flowers and things. Um, but then I saw this bag, and it was the day after St. Patrick's Day. And I'm, like, partly Irish. So um, when I saw this one with the clovers all over it, I just had to this lovely sturdy drawstring bag um, fairly big I mean it's bigger than any of the bags that I've made for myself so um, it was able to comfortably hold my entire Latvian mitten project which has four balls of yarn and lots of really pokey tiny double pointed needles so I, I had that in here for a bit it's just Nice and sturdy, nice, sturdy drawstrings. And this beautiful, beautiful fabric. On the inside, it's just green. Um, but that's okay. Keep it simple, right? So, Sunshine Lily Crafts. Beautiful bags. They, they're not interfaced super a lot, so they don't really stand up. But that's okay, because I was mostly just walking around knitting with it, so... Who needs it to stand up when it's hanging off my arm? Next up, this could be a little crinkly because I totally want to get this out to show you. Um, I got some top, some combed top. This is Romney top. And the colorway is cranberry. And oh my gosh, you guys. Just that color is so rich and deep. Um, so I'll show you, that's their, um, label. And this is their wool. And I don't think, I've never worked with Romney before, but I'm really excited about it. I like this little whiter bit in there, and there's some darker bits, and it's just all kinds of cranberry deliciousness. So I can't wait to spin that as well. Um, next up, how about I talk about the, um, the stand that gave me the bag that I filled up. Shirsty Cat. Now I know Shirsty Cat's been um, going all over the place lately. Um, I saw that Katie of Inside Number 23 had some of their fiber and put it into her Find Your Fade shawl. Um, and lots of other people have been, uh, she, she's been at lots of other festivals and things, and that's really exciting, and I'm really appreciative that she lives in Pennsylvania, and so I was able to get some of her beautiful, beautiful dye creations. Um, I had a skein of her yarn before, I, I still do, really, it's what I used, I, I am using, for my Printo the Wave Stole, lovely tonal green color. Um, and I'm running out of the yarn, and sadly she didn't carry any more of it, or I might have just bought another skein and knit the whole border in that separate dye lot so it didn't look as weird, but she doesn't dye the springtime color anymore, sadly. But I did get some fiber and some yarn from her. So... First, I'll show you the fiber, because I bought this first. This was my very first purchase of the day. 
Um, so there's her lovely label. The cat turns into yarn, or the yarn turns into a cat. I don't even know. Um, and this is a an 80-20 merino tensile roving. Um, the color number is 169A. It's just these lovely blues and greens and a little bit of kind of grayish, grayish, brownish, purple. I don't even know. But I love rovings with these little shots of tensile running through on the outside. And I can't wait to spin that and get kind of those lovely little pops of white color. Just makes them look kind of shiny. So, yeah. I got 100 grams of this beautiful fiber to spin. And I can't wait to try that. And I love just how, how these are rolled up so pretty. Um, so yeah, I bought this. And then I milled around, did some more shopping, and decided to come back to get a skein of sock yarn. Because I'm knitting socks now, and I just got new sock needles, so I might as well get something to knit into socks. And she just has so many fun, bright, vibrant colors that I can't find anywhere else. So I decided to go with that. Now this is her Just Sock base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And the color, oh my gosh, you guys, this color. This is called Drunken Rainbow. And yes, that's what a rainbow would look like if it was drunk. I love this like deep teal color right here and the pops of pink and orange. And I just can't wait to see what this looks like knit up. I just think it'll make great rainbow socks. And I don't have much in the way of rainbow yarn. So I just really couldn't resist. So Drunken Rainbow, you guys. Drunken Rainbow. There it is right there, Drunken Rainbow. Really happy about that. Um, next up, I bought two things from the same stand, but I think they were slightly different sellers. So the stand was Mulberry Hill Farm, which um, at the bottom there is their website. And I got, they gave me a card with all of their show schedule stuff on it for the year. And so, um, but they were also selling at that stand some yarn with a card labeled Distelfink Fiber Co., which, I mean, Distelfink, it means a lot to me. There was a uh, ice cream place near the camp I used to work that was called Distelfink. It's a very Pennsylvania Dutch thing. Um, so when I saw that, I knew I had to buy something from them. There's their card. So these were from the same stand, but uh, they might be produced by two different people and just sold at the same stand. I don't really know. But so from Distal Think Fiber Co., I got this lovely little sock mini. It's um, kind of a tonal peachy orange with little pops of darker orange, which I love. And I was just thinking that this would be great. This is the first time I bought a sock mini, but I thought this would be great to go as the heels and toes and cuff of my Felici Jamboree socks um, because it's got this kind of peachy, peachy pink colors. And so I thought that would just go nicely with it. So that's why I got this. And then... I also bought a ball of roving. Now let me check and see. This is 70% Romney slash Border Lester and 30% Merino. And it's just this beautiful, beautiful ball of roving. Um, so as you can see, it's like a two-tone roving, which I've never spun before. And I'm really excited for kind of the marled effect that it supposedly gives. I just, my, when I brought this home, my cats were like rubbing their faces on it. And I was like, that makes sense, cats, because I mean, all I want to do is just rub my face on it too. It just, it would make a great pillow, actually, I think. Just go to sleep. Dream of sheep. 
also that is my next fibery awesomeness i think that's all the spinning fiber no no not at all not even a little bit um because the next stand that i went to was highly dangerous there's only a few more stands to go i believe but this stand was just ridiculously dangerous so let me get out the card first um, this is, um, I went to the Broken Arrow Ventures stand. So there is their website. And on the other side, uh, those are the people who own the farm. And so they're an alpaca farm. So I bought some alpaca yarn from them. Uh, so this is, um, wow, they're a lot closer to me than I thought. Definitely going to buy from them again. So this is the yarn that I bought. Oh my gosh. So on their labels, they tell you, they give you a picture of and tell you what alpaca on their farm gave the fiber that goes into this yarn. So this one was from Cocoa Bean in 2016. And so it's 100% alpaca, but these little colorful bits in here are just little tiny bits of silk noil, which I totally forgot to look up where exactly silk noil comes from. But it's just little like pieces of kind of ratty tatty waist silk. And so they just spun it into this to make a nice lovely rainbowy tweed yarn that I just can't wait to find something to knit with. <laughs> um, so yeah, and this is a DK weight, a two-ply DK yarn. So really excited to knit this up. So that's the last of the yarn that I bought. But my gosh, you guys, Broken Arrow Ventures, their stand was so dangerous. First, I noticed... Um, some of this fiber. This is called Super Bright Trila Ball, which I meant to look up before I started filming to see what exactly this is because honestly I don't know. I just kind of bought it without thinking. Um, but apparently it works well for felting, so that's cool. And they were actually selling a bunch of kind of Eastery colors because it works well for felting so that people can like felt some little cute Easter eggs, but I'm also wondering if it would work as an add-in for spinning because it just looks really cool. Um, so I just bought it because I figured I'll find something to do with it. So I bought these two colors, this peachy color and this teal. Really happy about those. They just had baskets and baskets full of little packets of things and it was just really dangerous. So I also bought some hand-dyed Firestar, just to add a little bit of shimmeriness to my spinning. This is just black, um, but I thought it looked really cool. <clears throat> I also bought some of my own Silk Noil. I'll pull a little bit of it out of this bag here. There's the bag. And then... I'll pull it out. It's just like these little tufty bits of things that you can kind of add in, add into things and they add texture and color and a little bit of softness. Um, so I just thought it was really interesting. And then more Angelina. This one is gold and so shimmery. So shimmery gold. And then more Angelina. This one's lavender because I love lavender and I really like purple and it's just, do I need to explain myself? And then the last two things I'm really excited about. I'm going to pull them both out of the bag. So the first one here, I'll show you the package. This is hand dyed pearl infused rose fiber. So it's made from cellulose, like a lot of plant uh, based 
materials like bamboo or sea cell or tensile even. This is made from cellulose from rose fiber, fiber, and then they infuse it with like pearl powder as it's being formed or something, which makes it, it gives it this permanent kind of sheen to it. And it also makes it feel really moisturizing on your hands. Like you have no idea how soft this is. Just, just feeling it. It just makes my hands feel softer. Um, so I got this lovely blue color just to try it out because I've never even heard of this before and I thought it would be a great experiment. Um, so yeah, pearl infused rose fiber. Really fun find. And then this last thing I just know is super luxurious because it's, it's a little braid of hand-dyed mulberry silk, and my gosh, you guys, this color. This is the chestnut colorway. And it's just got so many beautiful tonal browns. I wanted to get some silk, and when I saw this one, I knew it had to be this. Even though I don't normally go for tons of browns and things, the color variation in this is just awesome. Now, what am I gonna do? with all of these random spinning fibers? I have no idea, but I have, I have plenty of fun things to experiment with, and I think that's just a lot of fun, so. Oh, and I, I thought that I was done with acquisitions, but I'm not done with acquisitions. I've got one more, and it's another project bag. And guys, it's the best project bag of all. So I'm going to show you the card first. It's from Rock Solid Designs. There is her information. And so when I went to her stand, she had lots of the nice boxy type bags, um, which I've never had a boxy bag before, but they've always looked cool. And I, I didn't buy anything at first because I wasn't quite sure which bag I wanted to buy. They had a lovely one with like a hedgehog print that I loved and they had some nice woodland creatures prints and things like that. Some alpaca print, you know, great stuff for bags. And I walked around, bought some other things and then I walked up to her stand again and I saw a bag I hadn't noticed before and immediately knew it had to come home with me. Just like this kitten had to come home with me. This is Agatha, and she hasn't been on the podcast for a while, so you may not have seen just how massive she's grown. Like, she's just a massive cat. This is a one-year-old. She just turned one on St. Patty's Day. She's a St. Patty's Day kitty. So she just turned one, and she's already, like, bigger than our four-year-old cat. So, you know, life. She just loves her food so much. So I got totally distracted because kittens are fleeting, but project bags will stay where I put them. She's totally a mama's girl. Um, hey, don't whack me with your tail. So I just knew that this bag had to come home with me and you'll see why probably immediately because guys, it's a Dalek bag. There's nothing in it right now so it keeps kind of bending out of shape but it's a nice boxy bag um, with a lovely sturdy snap tape on it and inside is this lovely yellow and white polka dot print with little black dots every now and then. But it's just got dollets and it says exterminate all over it. It's got this lovely sturdy strap. So immediately when we were at the festival, I switched it. So it was on my wrist and I would just snap, snap up the snaps most of the way up. Just leave like these top snaps open for my yarn to come out and I could just knit perfectly. Just. It's the best project bag I've ever had. 
Uh, but that's probably because someone else made it and most of my project bags were made by me, the terrible sewist. So I'm just so happy about this bag. I just, this festival was amazing. And, and then now that I got my Chowgu needles today, it's just like everything's just complete. I'm, I'm happy. And yeah. Come here. Um, I would be happier with a cat in my lap, but I guess that is not fated to be. Um, but yeah, so I have blabbered enough about how awesome the Fiber Festival was and how little knitting I got done. And so I think I will now go and get some actual real world knitting done. So until next week, happy knitting!